Hey guys, welcome to the 2019 International Detroit Auto Show, North American International Auto Show. And with me, as always, is my man, Steve Elmer. Hey everybody, how you doing? And behind the camera is Andre. Hey guys, how are you? And we're here counting down live the best cars and trucks of the 2019 North American International Auto Show right from Cobo Hall. So thank you for joining us. We're glad that you can kind of take this tour around the entire show. And we've got, I think, I think the fastest vehicle here, no doubt. Yeah, I think so too. And, and that's the good thing about today. We got a lot of cool things to talk about, cars and trucks. But we're starting with this guy right here. This is the new Shelby GT500. And look at this thing. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, powering this car is a 5.2 liter V8. Now, it is the same one in the 350, but this doesn't use that. Uh, this uses the flat plane crankshaft rather than um, it's the other way around. Yeah, am I backwards? Yeah. That one is the flat plane. This is a cross plane crankshaft. More importantly, supercharged. This car is going to make over 700 horsepower. We don't have an exact horsepower number yet, but over 700. And you know what? The specs on this car are pretty wild, and I think the looks back it up all day long. I mean, I mean, look at this carbon fiber wing on the back of this thing. This vehicle is potentially, guys, the fastest Mustang ever and potentially the fastest Ford ever. We don't know yet because mm -hmm. they have not announced the top speed, they have not announced exact horsepower, but they have announced the fact that it's got four exhausts. Check, them out. Check this out, guys, four exhausts, and there's a butterfly valve in one of those that opens up and gives you that really deep V8 Mustang roar. 5.2 liters, dude. Raspy. Yeah. I asked the chief yeah. engineer, top speed, wouldn't tell me. <laughs> I asked them, fuel economy, wouldn't tell me. They did say though it's going to be sub 11 second quarter mile and about three and a half seconds zero to 60. So we do got a couple numbers, but you know what? I'm expecting maybe even better things than that and once fair, they release. Fair enough. If you care about fuel economy, you probably shouldn't be buying this. Huh? <laughs> no, no. Something else we have to mention too. This car is hooked up to a seven speed DCT. It's a dual clutch automatic. It's not a manual and there is no manual for this car. And right now Ford isn't planning one. I don't know how you guys feel about that. It's a little unfortunate there's no manual here, but still that DCT should bang off lightning quick shift. So there's no doubt it's going to be a performer. Yeah, and unlike every other Mustang out there, now keep in mind there's four powertrains now, right? There's the base 2.3, there's a five liter GT, mm -hmm. there's the GT350 Shelby, which has the five liter uh, currently the top and now there's this one the 5.2 liter supercharge Super. and you know what is unique about this car it has instead of a gear shift selector it has a little rotary knob yeah yeah and you know what we put the video out already we've heard you know quite a few comments on that people don't seem to love it but you know why not what's wrong with the rotary shift knob I don't really get the hate for it but I don't know about you we have people joining us from Jamaica so awesome well we welcome <laughs> yeah and guys if you want to see what it's like to sit behind the wheel of this check out our video on this channel at TFL Now, we're actually sat behind the wheel and showing you exactly what it's like to look over the hood of the most powerful Mustang, Mustang ever. ever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so shall we keep going? Yeah, let's right. roll, man. I want to see inside the car, but there's somebody in there right now the, filming. Yeah, the German, um, the German crew's in there. So see right there. I think if you go on this side, Andre, maybe you can get in there. Uh, Ted is watching from Canada, so thank you, Ted. Well, welcome, to Ted. I don't know where you're from in Canada, but. Some great exposed carbon fiber in there too. Heck yeah, and look at these rims. Those are 20 inch wheels, Andre, 20 inch wheels, dude. Carbon fiber, dude. Carbon fiber, and those are the biggest, biggest disc rotors on a, any Ford that they've had. I mean, yeah, coupe. any yeah. coupe, they yeah. say any coupe, coupe production. Yeah, yeah. yeah period. But basically, period. They're, they're the size of like an extra large pizza. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. how big they are. Um, I'm getting hungry, that's boys. An, yeah, that's, that's an funny. analogy I, I can get behind. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's give them kind of a wide view of it. Here we go, just a quick walk around guys. It looks really mean, it's got a lot of aero work. Just look at all of the little chin spoilers and how wide this car is. It's, it's about an inch wider on each side in the front. It's really amazing. Hey, you can show them the inside now. Let's go show them the inside while it's available. Take them inside, Andre. You can't sit in it, they won't allow that, but you can certainly take them in there. I can, yes. Right now, this is a pre-production car. We cannot, nobody can sit in it, but I can show you the rotary dial for the uh, transmission, the seven speed dual clutch. It's similar to the one you would find in an expedition, but this one is larger. And the engineer tells us this transmission is very quick at shifting, very quick. 
I, I think we got one more vehicle we have to show here at the Ford uh, stand, and I think that is the brand new Explorer, dude. Yeah, the new Explorer. This is a pretty exciting product from Ford, too. I mean, the Explorer is really popular, and not only have they brought out just the new Explorer, there's a new Explorer Hybrid, which is kind of cool, but really cool, a new Explorer ST. There's a sport model now. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, let's take a walk, Andre. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think there are maybe a six significant cars here. And we're hopefully going to go and show you all of those cars. And not just cars, but also trucks, right? Yeah. After Ford, we've got the big boy heavy duty truck, the Ram that was introduced here. And we're going to go check out not only the Ram, but the Ram Power Wagon. <laughs> Which is, yeah. which is the exciting one. Which is excellent. But so show them all the explorers here. Here's a couple examples, but we'll go focus on that ST over there because that's a real beauty. Yeah, so this is the cutaway right here. It's being looked at. Um, it's kind of fun. Let, let me show that first. Yeah, okay. So this is actually so. a cutaway of the hybrid. So you can see the battery pack down there on the floor. And the one thing that Ford says about this hybrid model is that it doesn't lose any interior space compared to the regular Explorer. So they've actually managed to package all of this battery tech and make sure that going for the hybrid doesn't mean you get a smaller back seat, which is pretty cool. Usually a hybrid ends up encroaching on your interior space. Hey Roman, a couple of questions. Yeah. Dude, any news on the floor about the VW Ford partnership? There's no news on the floor about the VW Ford partnership recently become to our attention that uh, VW may be building the new uh, generation of the Amarok mm -hmm. uh, in conjunction with Ford. Actually, yeah. Ford might be building it, but there's none of that. And I'm going to jump right to the chase, guys. Nothing about the Bronco. Sorry. I know. <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> I wish. There were a couple of questions about the Bronco. Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> yeah. nothing about the Bronco here. We so, were hoping. Yeah, we were hoping. But let's talk about... We got the, this beauty instead. Yeah, let's talk about the <laughs> ST. Want to talk about the powertrains? There's three. Sure, yeah, yeah absolutely. So in the ST, um, this is the turbocharged EcoBoost. It's a three liter V6. Uh, this thing makes 400 horsepower. That's sort of the big number, which for an Explorer is pretty cool, right? Um, and then the hybrid, uh, it uses a new 3.3 liter V6, mated, of course, to the hybrid system. I don't remember the exact number. I think it's like 350 horse or something like that, a little less maybe. Um, and then the base engine is the 2.3 liter EcoBoost. And that's going to be, you know, probably in the majority of Explorers. But I like the EcoBoost. You know, it's nice to have the turbo power. And I think uh, Ford has a nice lineup for this Explorer for sure. Well, let, let's show the SD. Let, yeah. Can I do a walk around? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the big uh, one thing I want to point out that everybody talked about and it's not here but it is kind of here it's a screen right the one thing that jumps out at you yeah. is this one has the small screen yeah. but you can also get a much taller screen and a lot of people are saying it's, it looks just like it's kind of stuck on there yeah. like somebody kind of just took a screen and kind of plopped it in the center of the uh, dashboard uh, is it in the uh, no not in no. the ST I believe that one over there has the 10 inch screen yeah, let's go look yeah let's go let's go show let's go let's go show that fast so that, that you know I think in person it looks better than it does on video so it's uh yeah, come check it out. So there it is right there. That's 10.1 inch touchscreen. And Ford, yeah, they did do something different by sticking it on vertically, right? Not horizontally like most other people like to do. Yeah, here it is. Here's a 10 inch screen right here. And as well as the new Explorer design, this is a very important vehicle for Ford. Uh, this is the best seller in the three row segment for crossover. So, yeah. uh, big shoes to fill it's an important one for sure for the brand and there was another car that's competing directly with it that was uh, debuted here and that's the new kia telluride mm -hmm. and we're going to go show you that and we're going to show you some cool ones some off-road worthy ones because cool. they brought some sema builds here nice and dude I'm tell you, i haven't right, even seen them yet there's a snorkel <laughs> on one of them nice yeah yeah so imagine <laughs> a, t a, a seven or an eight passenger family hauler with a snorkel but let's head over to ram huh yeah cool let's go start on some pickup trucks yeah. here well yeah. we promised the st explorer really fast i want to show you the st Here's the blue one, and there's another interview happening here. So I'm going to be, I want to show you the front of it. It's got a blacked out grill, ST badging. It's got kind of cool, really cool blacked out rims. And I really like this blue color. I'm kind of a sucker for blue. So uh, this ST looks pretty nice. It does look nice. It right? does look nice, but I'm all excited about the new Power Wagon. Yeah, okay, let's you know see the truck. It don't see? care. Power Wagon don't care. <laughs> and speaking of exciting trucks, there's, of course, the Raptor. Yes. Uh, the 2019 with the live wire active shocks. Cool. We've got a video of that if you guys want to see that. Yeah, and there's a few Rangers here too, right? Nothing yep. we can see now, but yeah. I mean, so here we are, guys, really fast. We're walking by the dual clutch from the GT500 Shelby. This is the dual clutch transmission right here. Um, pretty nice. And also, here's the supercharger. 
for the GT500 Shelby as well. It's going to be built in Romeo, Michigan. So, um, U.S. built. Yeah, it's going to be built on the same line uh, with the regular Mustang. So, it's yes. built here. And look, Andre, not only do I see a power wagon way up there, but I also see a Gladiator. Yeah, oh, yeah, so we get two for one here. We get two for one. We get the Gladiator and we get the brand new Ram. And there is also a new special edition Ram that kind of popped out and yeah, surprised, surprised us. us. But, but you know what? You guys did the Ram story, so I'll let you guys kind of talk about it. How about if I take the if I take the camera sure. and then have you guys walk them through on the new uh, Rams? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so we published two videos, actually, one on TFL Now, this channel, and then another one on TFL Truck, talking about all the specs. And I thought we covered all of it, but Ram surprised us with this first truck, which is called the Laramie Black. And it's basically the new heavy duty, which has been redesigned, it has a new frame, updated engines, the Cummins now produces up to 1,000 pound-feet of torque, mm -hmm. right? But uh, this is the black version, what, what's up this with the black? Is, yeah, this is of course all about styling, right? And this kind of blacked out look has been really popular for a bunch of different manufacturers. You know, a lot of truck manufacturers are doing it, and Ram's doing it on the HDs. Now you can get it on a 2500, on a 3500, with a gas engine, with a diesel engine. So if you love the black on black look, that's what they have for you, the Laramie Black. It's pretty cool well, looking. Check it out, walk yeah. around. Let me, let me do a walk around, let me show you this guy. So of course, you know, black grill, black bezels, black wheels, black badges. On the interior, a darker headliner. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's a dark, dark truck. But what I really like, and I'm not sure how well this camera will pick it up, there's a nice fleck in the paint job, which gives it a, a little bit of flavor. Yeah, you can see that fleck. It's uh, really sweet. Let, let me go and show you the interior of this truck. Once again, of course, it's all blacked out. And Steve, uh, the interesting thing about the interior of these trucks, of course, is that they're very similar to the full-sized Half tons. Half tons, right? They're, they're not that different from what you already have out there. Right. Um, let me close the door because it's beeping. But uh, it's basically Ram decided to take the interior from the half ton that they just released a few months ago and actually put it into the older designed heavy duty cab. So now you have the same comfort, same materials, same features, trim by trim by trim. And speaking of trims, there's a limited truck and a power wagon over there. Let me yeah. show Let me just show the inside again. Hold on. Yeah. Here's the inside. That big beautiful screen up there. Is that a 12 incher? That is a 12 incher, dude. Yeah, right. yeah, it's a it's a nice looking screen. Everyone loves the interior on this Ram. So let's show them what they've been waiting for. Let's power wagon. So just before Power Wagon, we do have a nice Limited here, which is worth looking at. Now this is a 3500 Dually, and you know what, they do a really nice job with the tan leather interior. Uh, it, it comes across really premium. That's the key with this new Ram. It's, it's, it's a great luxury package. Even check out the headlights. Love the quad LEDs there. Great, great little design feature. Come over and here, guys. Come over here. The brand new 2019 Ram Power Wagon. And you might be thinking to yourself, what, they put new headlights on the truck and called it brand new? Well, there's a lot to it. And um, uh, Stephen and I did an actual video detailing every change. And that's going to be published tomorrow or very soon to TFL Truck uh, because Every new Ram Heavy Duty has a new frame, redesigned frame, much stiffer, and suspension has changed. Eight-speed automatic now. So maybe the Power Wagon could be a little bit more efficient now? Yeah, that'd be nice. But actually, the better part about the eight-speed is that because you get a lower first gear, the Power Wagon now has a lower crawl ratio. So, you know, for all you off-roaders out there, that's what you want, right? Low gearing, and now this thing is even lower than before. But check it out on the inside, dude. Still 12-inch screen. Come on. Yeah. Before we do that, let me show them the new winch, right? Sure. Because there's, a, there's so, a new fair lead, right? Yeah, so this is a worn Z on, and it actually uses a synthetic rope now, no more cable. This whole system here with these hooks is new, so you're able to hook it on really neatly. And then the hookup for the controller is right here. And before it used to be sort of behind the bumper and a pain to get to. So Ram has just made using this winch that much easier. And this is a 12,000 pound winch. So she's still, you know, really strong and capable. All right, okay. Let's see what we have. They return it to that name, Power Wagon. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's right here. So, so uh, you can get many different versions of the Power Wagon. You can get a tradesman with a Power Wagon package, but this is a top of the line truck with leather seats 12 inch screen so and you do have your 360 degree cameras now so this is more technologically advanced yep. and still a 6.4 liter hemi under the hood um, still the same engine basically same output 410 horsepower but um, it's been retuned because it's a new transmission 
and it can run in four cylinder mode a little bit more. So it they said be more it's, efficient. it's an improvement. Like the GT500, if you're buying a power regular, I'm not sure how much you care about fuel economy, but still, you know, the, the, the brands have to try and they, they've been light weighting these trucks yes. and like you said, working with the engines to, you know, make them sip so, fuel. So we, we're kind of forgetting the big elephant in the room. How much torque and how much will the trucks tow? Well, this one. Let, let's yeah. let's talk about this let's one. Come here. This one, yeah. So this is a mega cap. So mega cap is coming back for 2019. Uh, big numbers are so first of all, high output Cummins, 400 horsepower. So not class leading. 1,000 pound feet of torque. Class leading. Class leading. <laughs> uh, six speed ASIN transmission still. 35,100 pounds maximum tow rating. On a gooseneck. On the gooseneck. That's boom. It's class yeah. leading. I mean, I don't know. We have trouble finding a trailer that, that will heavy. be that heavy. That's true. So the, those are big numbers, uh, class leading numbers. Payload is 7,680 pounds. They have the Ford by 40 pounds. Nice. There, so. Not a coincidence. Uh, they went all <laughs> out on this truck. And how about, there's also a non-high output engine. What are the, the numbers on that one? Yeah, so if you get a three quarter ton, or actually a one ton truck with a standard Cummins, it's a 370 horsepower and 850 pound feet of torque, so they bumped the torque up. Yeah, still formidable just a numbers, bit. right? Formidable numbers, but they're not doing this thing that GM and Ford does where every diesel for every truck is the same. No, yeah. They're doing the standard output and then the high output. Which so. is great, gives you options, right? Options are always good. Yeah, if you want options on transmissions, they have that too, so. And this, oh, and this, this is the year of the truck, the year of the heavy duty truck, right? We're going to get a new, probably a refreshed Ford, and we're going to get a new uh, Chevy. So All new Chevy heavy duty is coming in Chicago Auto Show in February. Talk, boys. One last thing, Ron, you just said it about transmissions. There is no more manual in the Ram HD, which is a little sad. There, You could actually buy a manual with that Cummins. That's gone. Not enough people bought it. You guys should have bought the manual, then it would still be here. <laughs> yeah. So why don't we keep on it's walking? It's funny, people always say, you know, they love manuals, but then when it comes down to it, yeah, that's the thing. There was no sales numbers for it. Yeah. Oh, all right. So now, what do we got? We're leaving uh, some pretty important cars to the end, specifically the Toyota Supra. Right, that was debuted here. That's going to be exciting, Ooh, too. That's a, that's a good one. Yeah, and I think we're making our way over now to the new Telluride, which by, is... Yes? Yeah, by the way, Detroit Auto Show is in January, like right now, but this is the last January show. So it's a little bit, you know, fewer manufacturers are here this year. It feels, so a, little, it feels a little quieter this year, yeah. kind of overall, uh, which is nice for a change. You know, it's nice for us coming here to cover the show. But yeah, like you're saying, so this is the last January Detroit Auto Show. The next Detroit Auto Show will be in June of 2020. So you're kind of going a year and a half and then it'll stay in the summertime. Uh, and I think it will be much nicer to visit Detroit in June than January. I think we can all agree. Yeah, but what happened was a lot of the German manufacturers aren't here. So BMW is not here, Mercedes is not here, Audi's not here. Yeah. And that means that all these vehicles that we're walking by right now, these are kind of dealer cars. Yeah, these are all customs, right? I mean, yeah. some pretty cool cars here, no doubt about that. Yeah, but oh, but that's that. nice. I like the SRT. Yeah, SRT. Nice. I like the rat, man. Rally Queen. Rally Queen. <laughs> what what uh, Kia is doing with their Telluride driving experience. Oh, nice. It's right there, and there's got like a waterfall it just looks awesome <laughs> that's like detroit from the days of old man the big displays you know so what do you guys think was the best uh, was the best debut out of the show it has to be the ram for me yeah I, I, the ram for me heavy duty I gotta go truck too. I mean, you know, it's a stereotype. I feel like I have to say that, but it's true. Like, it's a huge deal when you get a brand new frame like that, a new Cummins block. It's a, it's a really cool new truck. So let me take the camera and then, Roman, you know a little bit about the Telluride. Yeah, I know a little bit about the Telluride. Uh, it's a seven or eight person vehicle. You can get captain seats in the back. So uh, you can make it either seven or eight. And it's one that's gonna compete directly against the Ford Explorer, right? Yep. Uh, once again, pricing has not yet been released, but let me show you some of the cool vehicles. So they did a bunch of SEMA builds, and like I said, believe it or not, see, come this way. Before we show them like the one they can buy in a few months, it'll yeah. be available in a couple months. Show them the crazy one. Yeah, let me show you the crazy one. Excuse me, guys. Can I just come No. I just want to show a car. Yeah, All right, come on in. You, you went the wrong way. I'll show it. Come on over. I'll, I'll grab it. Hey, guys. That's, check this out. This is the one that I want. Look at that. A snorkel. A snorkel. Um, a Telluride. 
How bad is that? How badass is that? That is a cool smartphone. <laughs> and it's coated too, huh? It's like in bed liner material. That's awesome. And they're giving rides. So if you're at the show later this week or when it opens, they have custom exhaust on these bad boys. So nice. it's really a deep V6 growl. Let's, let's get it before we get one over. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, Make sure you guys are just off to the side though, yep. just because. There it goes. Nice. You guys can watch the. Pardon me, guys, I just gotta get them in the middle. Careful, guys. I don't want you to get run over. <laughs> uh, this is the one that you can actually buy. Yeah. So this is the one that's actually available. And it's uh, very nice on the inside, Andre. It looks luxurious and it kind of. It has that really key uh, feeling to it, right? It's a little bit unique, it's a big SUV, but if you look at the dashboard, it's familiar. It looks like a Kia. Yeah, and see, unlike what Ford did, they went horizontal with the screen, Ford went vertical, and that looks a little more, you know, nicely proportioned to the dash, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice looking interior, no doubt about it. Kia's really been uh, knocking out of the park lately, I think, with their interiors. All right, boys, I think we made them wait long enough. Shall we head over to uh, Toyota? Yeah, let's Toyota's go, let's do it. Door. Let's go next door. And time for the Supra. Do you know okay. how many years it's been, Steve? I don't, how many? 21, dude. 21, man. That's, uh, oh, I was, uh, I was seven years old then when the Supra went away. <laughs> that was a Mark IV. Yeah, that's a long time ago, man. Now, this one's been co-developed, of course, by with BMW. The, with BMW. So it has a straight six turbo under the hood that puts out 335 horsepower. We that sounds know, okay. Yeah, it sounds okay. We don't know a lot about numbers again, except for the horsepower. Yeah. But uh, it's here, and for all of you super lovers, we're about to take a look at it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see it. We got two colors here. Nice. And once again, guys, if you want to look at that uh, up close and personal video, it's on now. Peace out, man. <laughs> on this channel, so check it out. You want me to take the camera? Yeah, once you take it. Yeah, and then you can uh, yeah. show it off. So, so voila, we'll look at that. It. There it is. How Drive to Motormouth. <laughs> we've, <got, laughs> we've got some other Canadians out. So, so, so there it is. We've got a two passenger, right? No four passenger with about 10 cubic feet of space in the hatchback. One of the things that makes it really unusual, of course, is that it was co-developed with BMW. So we have a straight six turbo that puts out 335 horsepower paired to an eight-speed automatic. So if you love growing your own gears, you're not gonna love the Supra because you can't do it, unfortunately. Isn't that a theme of the show? You know, Ram, Ford, Supra, no manuals. They're, they're going away. They're, they're, not, they're going away. So let's walk over let's to the red, the red one. one. Yeah. Thank you, See ya, motor mouth. Love yourself. Thank you, guys. That's quite a color. And you know, it's one of those cars, I think, that looks better in person than it does on video. Um, I see a lot of the Lexus RCF. I see a lot of those very similar lines in it. It's got something really unique. And can you spot that, Steve, by looking at it? What's unique about it? Look at, look at the roof line. The double bumps? Yeah. Double bubble. The double bubble. <laughs> it's got the double bubble That's roof cool. line. Look at that. The weird thing about it is, uh, we can't go inside, but if you look at our video, you can. Uh, you can actually see the BMW switch gear. So it's got that same kind of BMW gear shift selector. It's got mm -hmm. the same BMW screen that's kind of tacked on. I'm hoping we can actually look. I don't know, let's There's go see the, the let's car go, over there. Let's go to the white one. Maybe we can kind yeah, of show them. I can poke inside. Yeah, show them, show them the inside. Just at least get closer. At least get closer to it. Oh yeah. Nice. So maybe, maybe maybe you can go and kind of put the camera inside. Sure. Let's see if we can give you guys a look on the interior of this Supra. Really yeah. There we'll light go. it up for you. Take a look. No problem. I'm off it now. <laughs> yeah. There's no doubt you can uh, you can see the BMW influence in there. Yeah. Yeah. You can definitely see it. And you know. We did a video with Nathan kind of discussing whether it's a good looking or not. What do you think, Andre? You like the Supra? Uh, you know what I like? Yeah. I, I like how it looks from the back. Yeah, those let are LED headlights. Let, let yeah, me show you. Like the the lights. My, my favorite part is the dual exhaust system. So just check it out. I think that's a really good angle. I'm not a fan personally of the kind of the way the car looks in the front, 
but everybody has their own choice, right? Uh, opinion. I really like kind of the rear proportion. Yeah, and uh, before we say adieu, I think we have to go over to Lexus and show them the last hot car that was introduced here, which is the new RCF Track Edition. It is, boys, the second fastest Lexus ever after the LFA. That's cool. um, so let's go show them that bad boy. Let's keep okay. going. All right, bye, Supra. Bye, Supra. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Hopefully, it's very soon. <laughs> You know, it's pretty exciting to see not one but two sports cars actually introduced because that's very rare indeed, right? That's I mean, true. sports cars High are... High profile sports cars. Yeah, yeah, sports cars are a dying breed and to have two iconic ones at the show... Uh, it's is huge. It, it's huge, yeah, yeah, it's exciting for us. And I got to tell you, the Supra won't be available until the third quarter of this year. So we've got a little time to wait. Yeah. And so is the uh, GT500. It's fall. Before we get to it, though, let me show you the, the best looking car here, Andre. I think you guys look By great. far? It's by far. It's over there. Come on oh, with me. Yeah, it's, okay. a, it's a concept car. It's the Lexus LC convertible concept. Now, keep in mind, this is a concept. But my god, I hope oh. they build it. Well, the beauty thing is, last time Lexus rolled out a concept, they basically built it, right? I mean, and, this. And they've really been killing it with their designs. This thing looks production ready to yeah. me. I, I think that th this thing is ready to go. Yeah. Uh, even though they're calling it a quote unquote concept but why don't you give them a walk around it's yeah. just gorgeous all right check it out this is the lc convertible concept and again if you already know the lc they rolled it out as a concept and then basically just put it right into production and there's no doubt that they could do the same thing with this car and and i don't know guys i think this is one of the best looking cars on the road right now oh i agree a hundred percent a hundred percent it's a beauty there's something really cool about this car and maybe you can go and poke Poke inside before this guy gets his stand up so he can go do the. Just show him the interior real quick. Sure, so we let's take a quick peek at the interior. Just quickly. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'm coming down around. You guys can get a quick peek right there. Yes, I have to, to do it again. You gotcha. <laughs> we messed up a shot there, but we're live. Sorry. We're, hey, we're, where are you? who are you with? All right, friends. Friends, so sorry, we sorry French TV. I apologize. Uh, okay. oh, sorry, sorry. We will do it again. Anyway, the cool part is the interior has this beautiful yellow stitching. So you think white on yellow is not gorgeous, but it really is gorgeous in there. And Steve, I got to tell you, best car design-wise, no doubt here. It's yeah. just you know, if I had the money for this, I would buy it right away. But let's go over and look at the RCF. All right, last look. Beautiful. All right, come on over. Let's roll. Let's go. Let's roll. Keep going, Andre. Now, that is the one thing with the LC, right? It's a bit more of like a grand tourer. It's, it's not like a hardcore sports car, per se. This is what Lexus is going for, I'd say, with their hardcore sports, sports Actually, I take it back. I think this is the best looking car. <laughs> yeah, let's check out that wing on the rear. And why don't you uh, tell us a bit about this car? What's uh, what's going on under the hood? Well, it, it's, a, it's a V8, but it's been massaged and... Oh, you know, that, that convertible LC looks great, but I think the angular lines of this are CF. Yeah. Uh, and it, I mean, the sound of it, I mean, it's a naturally aspirated V8, it's high revving, and we've recently tested it on TFL car. Our professional driver, Paul, uh, took it around the track, and it still has big numbers, right, Roman? I mean, it was a very quick car already. Yeah, so, so this basically is an M4 fighter, and this is a true M4 fighter because this is the track edition. So obviously, tons of car carbon fiber, a lot lighter, uh, bigger wheels, bigger brakes, bigger everything. Uh, Steve, I'll turn the light on. Why don't you go show them the inside of it? Sure, go for absolutely. it. Yeah, Just don't mess it. with French I'll uh, try, TV. I'll try. I'll try. Just a quick shot. There's the beauty yeah, interior. <laughs> that red is just gorgeous. Yeah, there that we go. We, stu we, unbelievable we stuck in. Let's show them the front of it. Yeah, let's get and, around to the nose. Yeah, and you'll see the difference from the current one. Uh, the headlights are a little bit more uh, pointed. Uh, the front is a little bit more uh, angular. And of course, you've got this massive carbon fiber. Let's see. Yeah, look at that hood. That's cool. Yeah, I might agree with you. This might be the best looking car here. <laughs> I mean, neither one. Either you have it the LC or the RCF track edition. Yeah, man, go Lexus. They've they're... really turned that design corner, and, and they're just killing it now. Well, guys, there's one more vehicle here. Uh, as you guys might not know, uh, Steve behind you is the managing editor of TFL Off-Road, and there's one more vehicle here that actually falls into the off-road world. Yeah. So, shall we go show it to him? Yeah, let's go <laughs> let's check go, it out. Let's go. It's, it's this way. It's, yeah. it's the Rockstore. 
The Mahindra rocks, or and this is actually the first time Mahindra's even been at the Detroit Auto Show. Let's hand it off to Andre here. He's going to take the camera. Yep, and our man Steve is going to tell us everything about the rocks. Or well, they have a concept there too. Yeah, that's the cool thing, right? Um, is they brought out a concept, and and really what the concept is on this rock store is it's a bunch of accessories. Mahindra knows that the rock store is good, but it needs a really extensive accessory catalog to to really appeal to the majority of people, right? So they've brought out this concept, and they're trying to make sure that they have something for everybody to make sure everybody can use that thing. Now we got to find Mahindra straight ahead. Oh, there it is. Sorry, I was going towards Cadillac because Cadillac also unveiled the XT6 crossover. Yes, yes, yes. And we do have videos about that Should on we? TFL Car and TFL Now. Should we show them the Nissan IMS concept? We should. Yeah, yeah we, we should. should. Just, yeah, just we, really fast. Yeah. Let's take a walk by, and guys, I gotta tell you, I know nothing about this concept. I, neither do I, to be well, honest. It looks crazy. <laughs> what, I, what I know is they spent a long time on the interior, and I, it is a purely a concept vehicle. Yeah. It's electric, but the uh, I, I, I hope we can sneak into the interior and show it just a little bit. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously we've got a full story on this car at tflcar.com, so let's show them the interior of it, uh, and if you're really interested in it, it's a concept car. You check out tflcar.com. Yeah, there's all the detail there. And let me just quickly sneak in. Sneak in and show. Let me turn the light on again. There you go. There you go. Go for it. So here's the it from the outside. Can I show this really for one, one, one minute? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, one, one second. Sorry. Check out this detail. Yeah, that's quite a dash. It's insane. I mean, it's really from the future. And it's really unique. Look, Look at the headrests. Head. Look at the single rear seat. I mean, that's like, you know, aircraft it's, carrier, business class. One person gets back there, big armrest. It's for the king. That's luxury right there, okay. man. Yeah, Andrew, we've got the, we've got the design director. Andrew, What's your name? Hi, Giovanni Aroba. Giovanni. Yeah. Gio, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, you're live with uh, our uh, fan base, TFL Car. Car. So, well, beautiful vehicle. What was your inspiration thank for you it? Thank very much. Well, we was, it was the elevated sports sedan. That was, that was kind of a, our inspiration was sleek sexy and seamless so sleek edgy aerodynamic sexy confident in its proportions and stance and seamless built with quality precision japanese craftsmanship what's your favorite part of it uh, I, I just love the sleek sheer tension of the clean body surfaces you know when this really light architectural cabin sitting on top it's a kind of a formal modernity so is it frustrating as a designer that you design something like this, you put your heart and soul into it, and then you know it's a concept that may never get built, and by the time it reaches production, right, they take kind of the, the big picture and keep yeah, it, but yeah. all the little details, right, that you sweat and, 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 and work hard, those usually get lost in the production version. Yeah, I mean, this was our, our chance to fully express ourselves and kind of cast out a, a, a line very far out, and then we kind of try to reel it in. Well, it looks amazing. Yeah, it's great. It looks amazing. Thank Beautiful you very car, much. Man. Thank you for thank, take, you. thank you for taking the time to talk with us. Really thank appreciate you. it. All right, this is All right. great. Let's go. Let me show one more angle of it. Yeah. And just look at this, Andrea. Look at this corner. That's that's really really cool. The way it kind of blocks off the light there. That's a great little feature. Here, there's another quick look. Andrea, there's a big step. Andre, there's a there's a big step behind you. So follow me. I don't want you falling off the oh, stage. Oh my God! Look at that. That's a concerned uh, boss uh, right there. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have workman's comp? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's head across the hall here, and yep. uh, we can end up at Mahindra. Yeah. Let's what see a, the cool what stuff a, they've got. What a fine way to end, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. We started with the 700 horsepower plus, and we're, <laughs> yeah. end, like, and we're ending with up road. Uh, sub sub hundred horsepower, but. That's okay, this Mahindra is not all about high horsepower. Okay. So, there's a couple cool models here, but come on back, let's go check out the concept. This is all the right. one worth looking at. Let's go all the way to the concept, so, right? This is something that Mahindra is calling the Rocks Box Concept. Great name. Um, and really what it's doing, like I said, it's showing off a ton of different accessories. So first of all, the whole thing has been coated. They call it Rocks Liner. It's essentially like a bed liner. That's something they want to offer. Now, if we go to the back of this thing, that's where really the cool stuff is happening. Come on. So it's all rhino lined. I mean, there is a special lining, right? Yeah, absolutely. So every piece of metal here is all lined, which makes it stronger, makes it more durable, more resistant to the weather. And this is what's cool is this whole little deck system back here. So normally the Rockstar has sort of a little bed, and, and frankly, it's not the most like user friendly, but big workspace. It gives you this kind of steel mesh here to make sure everything stays inside. And look over there, you can actually fold it down and make this big work table out of it. 
Um, that's pretty cool. And then check this out, Andre, if you can focus down here. They've actually built in this drawer, which in this case they filled with tools. But again, you know, a great spot to have nice dry storage. Uh, this this is the kind of vehicle where, let's say you're working on a remote job site, you got to get somewhere way out in the bush, but you need to bring a bunch of tools with you. That's what this thing is for. And then finally, real quick, the trailer. The, Mahindra actually wants to offer this too. So it's a custom trailer frame. This is the bed lifted right off of a Rocksaur. It has an uh, electronic ram down there, an electric ram, so it can dump itself. Um, you know what? I'll give Mahindra a lot of credit for the, the vehicle they brought over is dead simple. Um, it's, it's not that powerful, but they're really working hard at expanding the accessory range and making this thing popular for everybody. Yeah, and if you guys want to see Steve's review of it, head over to TFL Off-Road. You yeah. did a really great comparison review. We beat on it. Yeah, you, you beat on it. <laughs> That's, That's what I do well. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you beat on it. And uh, the cool part was that uh, obviously it looks like a Jeep, right? Yeah. Yeah, so... That, that's sort of the story here is Mahindra kind of, they had the license to build the Willis Jeep as far back as the 40s. They supplied them for the war and that just sort of never stopped and Mahindra is still building them. Now they're importing it here as the Roxor. But of course, I really think Mahindra wants to sell cars in North America, legitimate road going cars. Because they do is, in India. Yeah, yeah. A, a, around the world, right? This yeah. is just a toe in the water and you know, I, I kind of expect next year we'll probably be seeing more from Mahindra. All right, guys, I'm going to end this show with something I think is very smart. Come on, Andre, let's show them the goodbye slogan. It's right here, right there, guys. <laughs> we'll leave you with that. Thank you for watching. Uh, for Andre behind the camera, say goodbye, Andre. Bye, guys. Thanks. And, of course, for Steve. Thanks, everybody. Thank you guys for taking the time to join us. And remember, don't do anything stupid. That's the best sticker in off-road right there. <laughs> that is the best sticker.